Paris Saint-Germain LGD is a team that needs no introduction. Not only has this team taken fourth and second in one of the most competitive regions in Dota, but they have secured third and first at the Singapore Major and the Annie Major, respectively. This team featuring Ame, Nothing to Say, Faith Bien, Shin Ching, and Y has been considered to have the highest probability of winning the entire tournament. China has not won a TI since 2016, and LGD is here to rise to the challenge and carry on the legacy. Representing the European region, Team Secret has dominated 2020's online tournament circuit. Taking TI-10 in full force, they have taken out both OG and IG in the upper bracket. Matumbaman, Nisha, Zai, Yatser, and Puppy have been showing that they are prepared for any team with counter strategies. And their patience and ability to reset quickly after team fights make them incredibly strong contenders to lift the ages. When asked about today's match, Puppy said, LGD are the team we respect the most. They feel like a brother team to us. We learn a lot from them and we enjoy playing against them. May the best team win. And now let's take a look at some TI memories with Xiao Ba. Uh, 就是决赛日的前一把都没有输过 在牛逼的时候，TS的时候，我们就是每打就是当时状态不是很好，然后每每打一场比赛前都要互相打击加油。所以就我们最强。所以就我们最强。当时拿下冠军心情就感觉很激动吧PSG, LGD, and Team Secret. This is a match that a lot of people have been super, super excited for. Insania, tell me why that is. I'm just really excited to see our TZ play up against Emil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's PSG, LGD versus Secret. Oh, right. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a clash of two <laughs> titans. I think you have two really interesting play styles in Secret and how they usually kind of play reactively and defensively, and LGD who likes to take the fight to them. Um, for me, it's going to be exciting to see, like, are they able to hold off LGD the same way they did OG? So for me, that's the most exciting part of the series. Like, can Secret put up the wall, as usual? The wall. The wall. We hear so much about the wall. Insania, uh, not Insania. I asked you that question already. Jenkins, well, tell me. As well. <laughs> that's I'm right. Keeping Insania the group too. Shook. Yes. Tell me about the wall. Well, uh, Team Secret, the only way that I can describe them is that it looks like all of their heroes are being microed by Puppy sometimes, all the time. I mean, when they're looking good, like if there's a fight that happens and they need to disengage, they all run in the exact same direction. And then if they need to like re-engage, they just all, you know, drop on a pin. Is that a saying? Drop on a pin? I don't know. They, they turn around <laughs> and they drop all go. On a dime, there it is, okay. <laughs> they all turn around at the exact same time. Like, it legit, it, Puppy, these might just be actors, and Puppy is microing all of them. Uh, beca and, and because they do that, it means that 
they can force you to use abilities uh, and then they take fights when you don't have those abilities up. And other teams, it's like in those fights where they're trying to disengage, they might lose a hero. And so they can't fight when that ability is down. And so Team Secret being so good at that gives them these openings that a lot of teams don't have. And generally, I think the wall that people refer to is like Puppy standing on a high ground in, you know, enemy team smokes in and they just kill Puppy, he buys back and then they take the fight because they're fighting down a low ground where they don't have that mischance and they don't have the vision disadvantage. Right. I think that's part of it, but I think it's also just the way that they team fight you. They don't give you anything for free. They're really, like you said, right, quick at pulling back. They won't fully commit into you until the time is right. And I think that's like Sicker's biggest strength in the series. They're going to be really patient and they're going to make sure that they wait out until the right opportunity occurs for them. That patience is legendary. And now tell me just a little bit, Tsunami, about PSG LGD. What is What do they bring to this match? I think of all the teams to have played out throughout the entire group stage and come this far through the main event, LGD have established the meta of this tournament more so than anyone else. I think Secret kind of go to the beat of their own drum. Like you mentioned, Jenkins, it does feel like Puppy's a puppet master to he is, an extent. Yeah. And LGD, if there is an overlord, it's probably Xiao H, Xiao Ba as the coach, but... The director. Exactly. Yeah. But in terms of individual gameplay, I think LGD, in terms of their drafts, in terms of how they play around their supports and their off lane, all these dynamics within the game, LGD set TI-10 on the right path. And if yeah. anyone's going to make it to grand finals, I have considered LGD to be my favorites. Yeah, 100%. My favorite thing about these two teams matching up together is like, I mean, it's hard to say exactly how important this is because maybe just like, you know, LGD doing everything right is more important than this. But if you name a trend in the last like six months that's new and interesting, LGD probably invented it. They made the carry axe. <laughs> they did the three Knolls Coddle first. They that's did. Not true. They did the. Okay. Wait, wait. Uh, all right. Insania okay. says that's not true. That's not true. Okay. Well, I have a list of about seven things that I can go on. Okay. The Coddle. Okay. Not they, true. they popularized. Did you do that first or what? So Mickey did it first, and <laughs> against nine in a pub, and then nine did it, and then they started doing it. Okay. So Mickey did it first. <laughs> At the Animager, they were doing the Daedalus, Satanic, right-clicking mid thing. Yeah, Mickey uh, did that too. Did Mickey do that as well? <laughs> I don't think so. Is, does, he just, <laughs> does he just invent everything? And no, then just LGD. Coddle. All right, well, Io stand Lycan, up for my teammates. Io Lycan, I'm absolutely certain. I've never seen that before. Have you that seen that? True. The Io Lycan that with shared here. control. I, I think that shared control is one of the least abused things in Dota. Mm -hmm. And I uh, back when like Beastmaster had all of these summons that you had to control, there were very few like tier one teams that were actually sharing control. I mean, I'm sure a few of them did, but it, it should have been everyone. It should have been everyone. It should be standard, but it isn't. And so LGD, like, they're constantly innovating. And the funny thing is, if you name trends the previous six months, it's secret. It's secret that True. made those. True. So it's like both of these teams are just hugely innovative, just at different periods of time. And LGD just happens to be coming into this tournament, the stronger team, but now secret showing up. And so the question is like, Who's going to be more innovative when they're both at their peak right now? And you, they, need oh, to, sorry, they need to resolve the beef, Sumi. It was 1-1 in the group stage right. between these two teams. And that's not satisfying. I need a conclusion. And at the time, during the group stage, I was like, oh, man, it would kind of be nice to see a definitive winner now. But saving revenge until winner's bracket finals, and like I had said before the teams even walked out, I think you're going to see a rematch. This is the grand All final right. matchup. This is the grand final matchup. Let's go. S G L G D versus Team Secret Game One. And welcome to the draft. And I'm not just excited about this game, but I'm also excited about this draft panel. Together, we average one TI per person on this draft panel. Isn't that impressive? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'd like to uh, ask you, Seb, first. In this game, what strategy would you use to draft against LGD? It's a tricky one. I mean, these two teams are absolutely wonderful. I mm -hmm. think they brought so much to this tournament and they have yet a lot to show. Uh, I, I know that <laughs> from experience. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be tricky. I think LGD, their understanding of the game is unmatched. Uh, but Secret have shown so far that they were able to break anything that came their way. Now, to me, the big question is, is Secret going to be able to break LGD, what they're going to bring to the table? And is LGD going to be able to adapt? Do they have, you know, can they level up? 
Can secrets force them to level up and can mm -hmm. they follow that? I know, Ali, you're a big fan of, of secrets drafting and playstyle as well. Can you tell me some of their strengths when it comes to the draft? So I think secret, they're good at identifying, like we saw um, when they played, actually, it's you guys, sorry. <laughs> but they're, they are good at identifying when they have a small window of time and they bring five heroes to the bottom lane, collapse on that. And what I like about secret is that after they do these big collapses, they're not impatient about their next play. They're willing to wait for what they think is their highest percentage fight. And I think that's where like, the idea of a secret wall comes from. They will sort of split the map in a way that they think is favorable in order to get the next highest percentage fight. They'll never take bad fights and they never give anything for free, as Insania said. And they start out LGD with a tiny uh, strongest pick. You guys also value this pick really highly. Yeah, this is a very big thing. So LGD has started the tiny, actually, in preparation okay. for TI. Uh, they, they, they found the abuse and I think they are the best team at enabling it. Mm -hmm. So this is a big, um, you know, it's, it's a big save from Puppy. It's like, I can counter this. Uh, they're going to have to prove that. LGD saw it coming by banning the Invoker. Uh, it's a hero that's considered very good against Tiny. Of course, one of the best heroes in the game at kiting the Tiny with his spells. The early Vessel can also allow you to push timings against the Tiny early and try to, you know, outpace him. And what LGD did with the AA ban is they're threatening the IO second after the Tiny, which is a deadly combo. So now Secret, they have to set up for the Tiny, but they also need to set up for the Tiny into IO potentially. LGD has also the freedom to not go for the IO if they feel like it was addressed properly. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things with the Tiny first pick that makes it really strong this tournament. Also, why the Wyvern will be here is a pre-counter to the IO and to Lycan. We have okay. seen teams do the Tiny into the Lycan. And this is also why this Mag and Wyvern is such a good opener versus Tiny, as we well learned yesterday ourselves. Because it covers a lot of angles. It's good heroes versus Tiny. The Skewer, force him out of position. You get enough time to actually burst through him. The Wyvern, you know, the HP burn. The Wyvern Curse, of course, if anybody's close to Tiny, he's just dead. And you cover the IO plus the Lycan angle on it. Very strong opener. So let's see what LGD has to offer to this, because teams so far have been abused by this opener, especially OG, unfortunately. Were you surprised that Secret burned a little bit of their reserve time in the first phase? Because I would think when I used to prepare for drafts, especially as like the most meta hero to turn, I would know my opener right away. Oh. I mean, they must have been talking about what is LGD going to pick that's not IO and not Lycan? Okay. And is Wyvern Mag good enough against it? And here you see how LGD, they don't go for the IO, they don't go for the Lycan. And it's smart because these heroes are already countered. They go for another tiny, tiny abuse. You want to enhance this tiny. You right. want to make him stronger than he already is. You, we have seen that with the, with the Venge, Venge Aura. We have seen that with the Lycan Bite. We have seen that the IO Overcharge. The Bloodlust is one of these spells. And now probably their approach is, hey, Ogre, is going to be very strong on the lane versus Mag and Wyverns that are not very strong. And it's going to push our Tiny to even stronger timings. So very strong opener from LGD. I would say that so far both teams are kind of looking at each other. It's going to be a Tiny strat, well-rounded. From LGD you always expect very well-rounded strats. And now we're going to see how the second phase is going to develop and if one team is going to get the edge on the other. I also like the idea of the Ogre Magi as in you know, um, Team Secret, they're already ready to buff up the carry. They have a lot of backup for him in team fights, but you also have that in power. You don't want, I feel like in this patch, you don't want your carry to get outscaled by additional, like, extra heroes helping him. Exactly. They match that from LGD, like, so I think LGD, they, versus they, Mag, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they never feel like they're going to get outscaled or out-tempoed or out-timed. I mean, it's always, they're ready for it. And I think a lot of that's because of how they view the draft. The enemy picks some team fight, they will match that. If they pick some buff or laning, they will also match that. And they'll try to eco the edge through, I mean, also in the draft, but mostly through individual play. And, and, team play. and Secret, they, they don't like uh, being on the back foot. They don't like right. having to, you know, um, they like scaling into the game too. They, they don't enjoy being in a position where, you know, they're getting out scale and they have to make the moves. We talked about the wall and they know very well how to play defensively, how to hit their own timings. So definitely both teams are in the comfort zone. Now you see with the second phase, LGD is removing heroes that are considered heroes that can take away the scaling of Tiny. Ursa cuts through him, no matter the stage of the game. Ursa with Mag, even better. Same for Necrophos. It was actually their own answer yesterday, LGD, that they did against... Um, it might have been... It was VP, I think, that when Tiny LGD went for the Necro. Very strong on the lane. Can mm -hmm. follow him around. You can put Necro 3 versus Tiny 1. You can put as a one-on-one -on -one mid. And you get the Necro Aura plus the Necro Ulti versus Tiny throughout the game. Always great. And teams so far have not flexed the Tiny to support position which is a trick that hasn't been used yet, but maybe because teams don't believe in it, or maybe because the tiny, the tiny one hasn't been broken well enough that teams feel like, hey, we have to adapt. I feel like it's a weird dynamic with the heroes that are considered the strongest, is that 
at the end of the day, they're the strongest because they have so much impact and power. You really want them on the core position. But you're saying like there might be value. Do you think in this game in particular, there's value in putting a support? No, and it's also much harder from first pick because on first pick, if you pay close attention to what happens in the second phases, you're going to get counterpicked on the 18th pick and the 24th pick, meaning the last pick of second phase is to second pick. And the ultimate last pick is also to second pick. So it's very hard to keep flexing heroes because you're going to have to show your cards before second pick reacts, right? Which is also why this tiny on first pick is strong because you're building such a strong strategy that it cannot really get counterpicked. You're basically putting something on the table. It's like, hey, we're going to play the strategy and we're going to cover the angles early, which is what they're doing now with the Ursa Necro Nix. It's like in their heads, they're taking away what they think will beat tiny one. And then they're like, beat it, basically, right? And it's going to be up to secret whether or not they can do that. They have to beat it with what LGD think is the fourth best strat against Tiny, because they're banning out the best three. Right. I was actually thinking, because usually a lot of what I see in this tournament is you'll pick the most Inva hero on their first pick, from mm -hmm. first pick, and then your next pick will be the best core that you think is against their two heroes. But because LGD, they're already sort of committed to the Tiny game, they want to focus all their bands on Tiny, they're just picking out Ogre so that they can focus their bands to protect Tiny. So here, in my opinion, the Snapfire, why it's interesting is it's a very solid hero, doesn't reveal too much. And keep in mind that second pick, they want to play their cards with the next two picks. Here, they want to build something solid, and they're going to reveal that later. The Ogre 5 in my position, in, in my opinion, sorry, would have created a problem for Secret to address, where it's like, Wyvern 4 versus Ogre 5, you're going to have a big laning problem. This Wyvern is going to get zoned out of the lane, the Magnus is going to get very bullied. Now they build this lane that is a very strong, solid one, Mag Snap. Lanes into anything. Lanes into Ogre 5, lanes into anything. Now LGD should expect this Wyvern to be a 5 and not a 4. Um, so now we're just, you know, Secret is still not revealing. They're trying to stabilize their lanes, making sure they don't get the game off with a really big disadvantage five minutes in. And this is the really tricky part for LGD. Now they have to start exposing themselves, drafting-wise, with the next two picks. And they, they're forced to come into something. For a secret, you know, you might have Wyvern 5, which is maybe seen as a little bit of a weaker laner, but you do have that core counter pick. Uh, did you feel like second pick sort of had an advantage in the draft this tournament? I think it really depends how well teams use. Some teams have done a really good job at it using first pick too. For instance, if you, if you consider that the way they cover the tiny angles is just too strong, then you're not at a disadvantage at all. And here, they actually go for the Lycan. It's, a, it's very interesting because Lycan is considered very countered by Magnus and Winter Wyvern. <laughs> But obviously, it isn't about the Lycan summons as much as it is about biting the Tiny. And then the Wyvern ulti doesn't stop that. The Mag RP is not going to stop that. At some point in the game, the Tiny has status resistance on level 20. RP doesn't do anything. So here shows how confident LGD is into the Tiny Lycan. And to me, the reason also why they allow themselves to go for the Lycan is because they, they know now that the Wyvern should be a 5, meaning there's going to be very little pressure from Secret safe lane, and they're going to get away with laning the Lycan. Lycan's gonna hit good timings and they're gonna bring the Lycan Tiny. You're looking at mid 20 with Lycan Tiny. You, mm -hmm. you need the shard on Tiny and you need Lycan with the axe. Overlord and the, and, and the Dom, and the, sorry, the Axe. This is a Phoenix into Snapfire. I know, like for a lot of people, it, it's a pretty big counter. You know, you have the little Shredder versus Egg. But I think LGD, they've identified that it's not so simple for Snapfire to yes. just hit that egg. There's a lot of things just running at them. You have an ogre in front, some Lycan will scouting you, and exactly. two giant hounds just running at you. I'm also curious about one thing, about whether Secret decide to put this Magnus as carry, just because they've seen the Lycan. Interesting. This is when I've seen Magnus as carry. I'm not too sure if it, it'll scale well enough for his tiny, maybe a little lack of damage, but I, I would be curious if they want to go for that. If they do it, then they have to play on earlier timings, because it's definitely not going to scale into the tiny Lycan. They will lose. and. I think ex from experience, Secret don't like to play on the, as I said, you know, they, they want to be the ones kind of driving the car and, and having kind of LGD mess with them. But both teams like that. This is when, you know, one team is going to end up having to play maybe out of their comfort zone. And that's why drafting is so important. But now when I see the Weaver, to me, this really looks like, um, I, I talked about how the Wyvern Fire is very weak on lane. Weaver is very strong. Right. Weaver 1 is super strong. Weaver 1 can, you know, do really well against the Lycan lane by herself. And now Wyvern actually isn't griefing the lane anymore. He's even helping. He has oh, you actually a good kill threat in that lane, right? Completely. Weaver plus Wyvern. So I they're taking another approach. Weaver also kind of interesting versus the, you know, this tiny, hasted, bitten. Like Weaver also, Sukuchi's around. She doesn't suffer as much. I don't know how well it's going to scale into it. It's going to be a Weaver with Empower, buying Skyly versus Tiny, all of that. The scaling to me is still on LGD's part. 
But you know, Secret, they have some very good things going for them. They have this immense team fight, a lot of lockdown. But this is when the Phoenix also, you know, like, of course, it's not good versus Snap, but it's one of the best heroes in the game against both Magnus and Wyvern. The way Phoenix fights, start the fight, plays the egg. Myvern, Magnus and Wyvern, they have no counterplay to that. I am honestly a bit surprised that they went for Weaver. Like, in terms of Salex's like choice, I think you're completely right that Secret sort of want to be able to wait for their timing, form that wall. I think this game, maybe they've identified something, well, how they think they can break LGD. I think when LGD lost to Tundra in um, whatever tournament it was, <laughs> sorry, I forgot. Um, part of what Tundra did was they would actually abuse LGD's offlane. I think Faith Gone and Jinkyo, they're really good at laning, but they always sort of play to get what they want instead of pressuring their opponent. If you go overboard, like, you know, Fado would play these gyrocopters, or something insanely aggressive, right. you can actually shut down their offense and sort of snowball off that. Like, I think that's what contributed to Tundra beating them. Maybe see seen that and they're going for sort of a similar thing here. It's possible, very possible. And you see how, again, the last pick from LGD, it's a tricky one. They have to try to cover some angles and pick blindly again. And this is the power of second pick, whereas, you know, this, this, there's a lot of counter picking happening with the Weaver and the last pick too. And you can't really stop that. What LGD brought to the table, which in my opinion is the proper way to drive on first pick, is hey, it's a tiny Lycan strat. It is hella strong. We got to ban the Ursa, we got to ban the Necro, whatever we think would get in the way of this, counter it. Um, th this is when I think there's actually much more balance between first pick and second pick if you use them properly. But if you're trying to play how draft how Secret is drafting from first pick, you're gonna end up in a big, big, big trouble. Now the puck gets countered by the DK, classic counter. DK Breathfire, damage reduction versus Tiny, very effective. Uh -huh. Damage reduction versus Lycan, very effective. Now it's gonna come down to certain things. I think Secret have a play of going to Tiny's lane with the Weaver in the snap and pressuring him and playing the Magnus versus Lycan 101. They might actually win three lanes and then can snowball. Secret know how to push their timings when they win lanes. I think that's one of the angles that LGD might not be ready for. But I would say that LGD, both teams are really happy in my opinion and I feel like LGD scales better, so we'll see. So the idea here for LGD would be to prevent that early timing, try to win that mid-game with their team fight and outscale the enemy team, whereas Secret is just trying to snowball. Yeah, I think yeah. Secret's draft, they, they have to take some towers and take away farm for opponents, steal their camps. Right. Honestly, it's a bit different than the Secret I usually see, but I think they're more than capable of it, and I think they've shown that in the past too. I, I'm, I'm very excited to see this game because I feel like it's, it's too sort of opposing views coming into this game. Mm -hmm. It's just like some puppy versus Shaoi and you'll see how their ideas clash. Geniuses of the game going, you know, full force at it is something of beauty. Beauty to witness, beauty to be able to watch it. And yeah, LGD think a lot about the minute 20 timing. They want to build up to that and see how hard they can hit secret with it. Right. And finally, if I would like to ask you, I don't like asking this question usually, but usually I ask, oh, what draft do you favor or something? This is just two completely different ideas. There is no favoring any draft, right? Or would you say that one idea counters the other? In my opinion, LGD's Tiny is very, very strong. They, they made the Lycan meta. They made the Tiny meta. Right. This is their bread and butter. They are extremely good at executing it. I think Secret is going for a... They went half-half, in my opinion. I think they have the laning that can go really well for them, and they're good enough to win the game, right? But they start with Magnus Wyvern trying to scale, and then they end up going Weaver DK. Now they're taking a different approach, you know what I mean? I don't think they fully committed to one or the other. We have no Puppy Ench with TA taking Roche minute seven. Now we're like, they try to play LGD's game, and then they revert to something maybe a little bit faster. I don't know if it's going to pay off for them, but Puppy has proven, you know, being one of the greatest minds of Dota. Well, we're going to have to see what the coaches think themselves as we have Frankie on the sidelines with Heen, Secrets coach. Thanks, guys. Heen, plenty of counterpicks in your draft there. Did it go how you expected it to go? Sort of, yeah. I think the first half of the draft is usually easy to predict and prepare. And the later half is uh, situational, so we weren't really surprised in this draft. And well, Heen, the game is getting underway. Thank you so much for talking to us. We're going to head over to Cinder and Anne Sunsvan to get it underway. Thank you very much, Frankie. Best of three upper bracket finals. Cinderin Secret versus PSG LGD. The juggernauts finally clash. PSG LGD, basically the favorites of the entire tournament, and they didn't really slow down much in the group stage, but did lose one game, and it was to Team Secret. Yeah, exactly. Um, that, you know, it's it's funny to look back on how the group stage went and, and realize that I think in the second game of that series, PSG kind of rolled them, but like you said, it was the one game that they lost. I believe in that game, PSG LGD were rocking some Alchemist Death Prophet strategy. Uh, might have been their only Alchemist pick of the tournament. Secret just found a solution. They mm. beat them with, ironically, 
Ogre Tiny in that game. So uh, this time around will be played by the PSGLGD side, so maybe took a little bit away from that series and want to bring it into this match today against uh, against Team Secret. Um, but yeah, for after we've seen a lot of the main event played, I think it makes so much sense that these teams are going to face off in this upper bracket final. Yep, it's only fitting for sure, as Ame is going to be playing that Tiny. And I do want to talk about Tiny for a bit, but first, Magnus. These two heroes, in fact, are the two heroes of the tournament right now. They're continuing to get through. I do have to say, every TI, there's a couple of heroes that just don't that just get past the, the ban stage for whatever reason, yeah. even though they're extremely powerful. But I think the difference for me, I might be biased because I love strength heroes. These are really exciting heroes to watch, especially the Magnus. So happy to see that this time around. Yeah, for sure. There's a, there's a lot of... How to say, they just make plays, right? That's what makes them so exciting to watch, is that they make moments. Uh, Tiny with the insane cleave damage and the single target burst potential. Uh, and Magnus with, we've seen Horn Toss make many a play already. Yep. Uh, and of course, the, the team fight potential here. So, yeah, should be good to watch. In the off lane, we are actually going to see the lane that uh, Seb was talking about would be problematic here for Secret. So we'll see how it goes. He, he predicted that Y on the Ogre would be able to just shut the Winter Wyvern of Yaps are out of the lane, and as a result, that Secret might put the Wyvern 5, but they have still opted for putting Puppy in the safe lane on that Snapfire. Um, so, yeah, if, if, uh, if Seb is right here, this should mean a great start for Ame, as uh, he would effectively be playing more or less one-on-one -on -one against the Magnus in lane, while Y would be bullying away Yaps. Or... Definitely, see his Shockwave not able to connect there for Zai. He's going to be playing the Magnus this time around. And Matu playing the position one Weaver. So things kind of going as expected. Faith Beyond on the Lycan this time around. So are we expecting the Aghanim Scepter into the Bite of Tiny, turning him into yes. a, a Rock Wolf hybrid? We are very much expecting that. Um, it seems to be the clear cut plan uh, that PSGLGD showed Secret immediately on their third pick. They're like, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, Secret with some some decent solutions, right? You've got two BKB piercing disables through Winter's Curse as well as RP. You've got the instant catch of Dragon Knight. And speaking of Dragon Knight, he is destroying. Nothing wow. to say in mid. Nisha is 12 and Holy 4 crap. against 3 and 2. <laughs> and nothing that to say is to kind of unheard. I mean, nothing to say has been owning so hard. We talk about how he's the one dominating his lanes usually. But yep. you're right. This is not remotely close. It is still early, but... It's a DK. It is a DK favored matchup, but I don't think it generally goes this well for the Dragon Knight. So Nisha must have done something really, really well in the first few waves here. Yep, gets another Dragon Tail, more denies to come, oh. just continuing to dominate. I mean, we typically don't like spend too much time talking about the CS, but <laughs> this is uh, very one-sided so far in this yeah. mid lane. Good news for LGD is, of course, uh, Ame is the, the, current, the current farm leader by quite a margin. Uh, more or less just getting everything he wants in this top lane. Uh, the only thing he needs to truly worry about is the Arctic Burn, just chipping away at him. But, un uh, oh, well, fortunately for them, Y can expend as much gold as needed on buying extra region for the Tiny to stay safe in the lane, as Ogre Magi is very item independent. Even in the laning stage, isn't too important to get those boots, for example. Can just act as effectively a wall with his spells. Nothing to say. I mean, he spent so much time trying to go get that bounty rune, and Yapsor just denies it essentially by taking it himself. He is finding absolutely nothing. In this we'll see if they end up trying to rotate somebody over to help him out in a couple minutes here with probably the six minute rune, I would assume. Uh, but not so good so far for nothing to say. But I mean, in terms of comeback potential, what, what kind of options does Puck have in this specific game? Uh, it's, it's okay. Um, I think obviously Puck thrives if it wins its lane, but I don't think for PSGLGD's lineup that it's integral that nothing to say is owning. That's the good news, is that if you were to lose a lane here for LGD by a bit, I honestly think losing the Puck lane is almost the best, right? You want the Lycan to get the gold for the Wolf Bite like we talked about, and you want Tiny to be the to be the shining carrier of this game. Puck is not going to truly carry. He's going to be utility. Nisha. Yep, Nisha, illusory ore with the Fire Spirits of Jin Q. He's burning down. Nice body blocks from nothing to say. Not going to be enough for a kill, but forces Nisha out for now. In fact, they're actually going to go back onto nothing to say. Instead, gets up the illusory, but the stun comes out. Yapsor with the first blood. And Team Secret actually get another kill. Matu kills Faith Beyond in the bot lane. So Crimson witnesses for everybody. So just kidding. <laughs> 
Uh, only a small percentage of people. Check your inventory, guys. Except if you're Falk, then you get one. My every God, game. how can he be so? <laughs> no. <laughs> the luckiest per Eleven crimson. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, if you get left alone as Lycan against Weaver Snapfire, this is a really rough lane. Uh, Lycan fares pretty poorly in a lot of one v twos. You don't have any mobility. Your defensive capabilities. You're okay with the Helm of Iron Will, but it's not nearly enough against the overwhelming damage of the minus armor that these two heroes have together in lane. So it does pay the price there for Zinqiu's rotations. Puppy is very much laying into him here. Zinqiu will have to back off, use the salve. Yeah, secret. Absolutely off to a great start in this game, number one. I think if they could just see the game state right now, the exact farm, they would feel very comfortable. Yeah. All of their cores are getting what they want for the most part. But of course, you are playing against a tiny Cinderin, and we've yeah. seen this so many times before. It's Faith Beyond. Oh, nice cookie from from Puppy. Ends up stunning Faith Beyond. Has to kill off the buzz, and looks like he's just barely going to live. Matu doesn't have another Shikuchi for a little bit here. Might be pursuing now. Not worth the trouble, as more rotations came in for PSG LGD. You can see nothing to say, getting harassed out of lane again, as Nisha's Dragon Form comes out to do some corrosive breath damage to that tower. Nisha will get his level 6 here, so there is some play potential made with a Dream Coil, but the good news for Secret in that sense is that the supporting cast of PSGLGD doesn't really gank Dragon Knight very well right now. Ogre as well as Phoenix don't have burst damage, it's damage over time, and Dragon Knight's regen works very well against this type of damage, so he should be completely fine to just stay there and keep pressing that tower. There's the He's gonna use his first coil, it's only onto the Wyvern though. Oh, he might get Nisha tail pursuing here. Dragon Tail, not able to be dodged, that's gonna be an easy kill for... Team Secret, as it looks like the sacrifice will be Yapsor for a one for one as Nisha still looking for yeah, a high five, pursuing rank. it to the high ground, still in the dragon form right now. Why? Ticking away slowly. Okay. Looks like he will survive though. He got pretty good value out of that dragon form. <laughs> getting a kill, getting the bunch of damage to that tier one tower. Yeah. And obviously the kill being on, nothing to say, is huge. And Team Secret, Secret clearly understand that. The, the position that their Dragonite is in. I'm sure Nisha communicated, uh, you know, my game is great right now, let's play around me, let's put some pressure mid, and both teams make big rotations here to, to try to continue this pressure onto that mid lane and the puck. I think to say, well, at the very least here, it'd be able to get a full wave with double range creeps, so getting a little bit of comeback, but as it stands right now, is 400 net worth behind that Dragon Knight with two deaths. Honestly, thought it might have been worse than that, right? Like when we saw the start, um, he's keeping up somewhat okay here, and the bigger lane that Secret has the biggest win in is, as a matter of fact, the bottom lane with that Weaver massively out farming Lycan. Yeah, Matu already has Treads, Falcon Blade, so gonna do some damage to Jin Q, forcing out that dive. But yeah, just early laning stage advantage for Team Secret. Is this a lineup that you think that they can? Uh, oh, you're gonna see the Avatars from Ame tossing Secret away. Is this a lineup from Secret that you feel like can really take advantage of just uh, like an early lead like this? Like, is it an easy to execute lineup? Um, I ball? think when, when Magnus gets the Blink Dagger, I think you have a lot of options with both Dragon Knight and Magnus Blinks. You, you have a, a clear-cut stun, you have a repositioning ability against a team with zero saves, except Sunray. So I definitely think Secret can can turn this into a potentially snowball the game at around minute 15, while uh, PSGLGD might still be building up a little bit on their Lycan. Uh, but I I'm with Seb on the, on the logic here that the, in, in a way Secret are a bit on a timer, right? Like LGD's lineup feels like it can scale better, uh, but they also do have that weak spot. And Secret has been very good at executing uh, in specific points of the game this tournament. So if they identify when they need to get stuff done with their DK and Magnus, they definitely have like a 5 to 10 minute power play where I feel like they're just going to be stronger. Mm -hmm. So Nisha's back onto mid. Bloodless yeah. the tower here does Y. Not going to be much of a defense other than pulling that wave, like you said. Uh, Nisha will be perfectly happy with that. Just continues to right-click away. There's nothing to say. Being pursued a bit by Matu, but not wanting to get Waning Rifted and potentially taken out. And it looks like PSGLGD are making the decision to not even try to defend mid. They're actually just going to trade for bot. This is widely considered a bad trade. Uh, the mid tower having higher priority and being more difficult to siege in general, but they've only parked Y there, and now, well, is gonna arrive, but it's too late. Too late. The tower's gone, so one for one tower. I and think now, Secret again happy with this. Yeah, four person smoke from Secret as Ame is in the jungle. Let's see who they actually try to pursue. Matu. He's gonna run into Ame. Avalanche has already been expended. Matu did steal the centaur creep, though. I tried to go for this tier one, but... Small wins. Yeah. 
secret. Basically, all in the top lane for the most part. Uh, minus puppy. Zai will keep him though. So they are getting a little bit of value out of the dragon form up top, but not much. It expires now. And Zai will make sure that Secret don't end up trading two for two on towers here, but rather that they hold their mid while taking top. So really good stuff here. I think rotating Magnus mid is probably the best choice. It was either him or the Wyvern. But I think Wyvern is a bit concerned with just getting Dove, as that is going to happen to Puppy instead. We'll get the cookie off. Yeah, there's a little bit of space there. Continue to get pursued, but Yaxor's in the vicinity. Gets the cold embrace on. That's going to mitigate all that physical damage. Now, Faith Beyond rethinking his decisions here. We'll just have to walk away, but Puppy basically dying to just these creeps. <laughs> very, very... I mean, that's death of a thousand bites, Cinderin. Yep. Does not feel good, but PSG LGD get what they want there. Funny situation, you know, there was a really good juke from Puppy. I think this is how he buys the most time, but also how he puts himself in the worst position mm -hmm. and the follow-up. And Secret do spend two TPs rotating down there with Wyvern and Dragon Knight to effectively not do anything much with it. Um... So I think in hindsight, you know, sometimes you just cut your hero. It, it's not like this was going to turn into a tower push from PSG LGD. I think they were just going to grab that one kill. Uh, and they, they will be very happy to also get those two rotations out of it. Making space for Zinkyu in the top lane. Ooh, Dream coil. Yeah, coil has to be expended. Nothing to say. Trying to get these little bugs off. Q helps out a bit as well, but still being forced out completely by Matu. So Matu working on the Maelstrom. So about 1,200 away from finishing that. I feel like Weaver is the single strongest hero in the game to buy a Falcon Blade on. Um, and that's an item that's been gaining a lot of popularity in this recent patch, uh, after the extra buffs in 730. Um, even at, at the times when Falcon Blade was a rarer purchase, we would still sometimes see it on this specific hero. And it's because Weaver is a very much tempo-based carry, and all of the stats are just incredible. You want the mana regions, you can spam Shikuchi for the farm. You need health, because you inherently have pretty atrocious strength gain on this hero and bad base stats. And you want the damage because you're a carry. So uh, obviously has been a feel-good item for a lot of carries here, but we've seen it fade a little bit in popularity, but it's remained the pickup for Weaver through the entire tournament as a carry. And you're, you're seeing there, right? He's just He feels very confident up here just pressuring the Puck and the Phoenix in the lane. They don't have enough to take him down. Yeah. Well, in terms of item picks up, pickups, Zai, is that a... Yeah, Blink Dagger just got delivered blink. to him, so that's obviously a big deal Dragon for tail. the initiation base hero. That is Magnus Nisha. Finds Y for now. Yapsor not able to catch up, though. They're going to take an Ignite for their troubles here. Nothing to say. Finished Veil of Discord, by the way, and actually bottled the arcane rune as well. Very interesting to see him yeah. not get a single point in phase shift against Dragon Knight. It is a dodgeable stun if you're playing on distance, but yeah. going for the full-on damage approach here, nothing to say. And this is an important smoke for them. They're going to try to collapse with shapeshift onto the mid tower. If they could find a pick, they could get this tower, but Secret with a good read are already all moving top toward Ame. And he will probably TP away. He's going to go bottom and play the triangle instead. Oh my god! That was, that was very close. close. <laughs> About a half Zai. second away, but uh, gets away nonetheless. And Secret probably, yeah. They're going to rep back to mid, and Puppy will take care of probably just scatter blasting this wave and then backing off, just pulling it with with a little shredder. But, well, Secret needs to do something more than this if they want to hold it. Just the, the summons of Lycan are doing it on their own, and Snapfire can't kill these off without using ulti. Yeah. In which case, you could just pull them away for a second and go back in. And this is a really good push from LGD, by the way. They're giving Secret no opening, essentially, by doing it this way, but at the same time also forcing heroes to be in position and ready. But this is such a low commitment play. You just have a Lycan with the with the creeps there and the Vlads. Yeah, they're just farming the jungle, poking at the tower, yep. forcing Secret to be smoke kind of in an awkward spot. And yep, now the smoke comes out for PSG LGD. Let's see what they want to do here. Nothing to say. Still working on his Blink Dagger. Awesome. Thousand away from that. As... Got off to a slightly rough start, but fully ex based on his performances so far this tournament, I expect him to definitely bounce back Radiance in the mid game. Wrapping back around Radiance top of the Roche pit, has been and denied. you can see that Matu is in the general area. Oh, he's in trouble here. He's not expecting this move at all. There's a coil. Yep, there's the. All right, they're going to get the coil off. He's not going to break it quite yet. Now he does, and well, still silent, still stunned, and brought down. Big kill for PSG LGD, but Nisha and company want to get some revenge. Cookie on top of the Dragon Tail. Why taking most of the damage? It looks like he'll oh, take out eventually. RP. RP gets died by nothing to say. Has the loser or come out, but there's the curse to follow. 
It is enough to bring him down. So a two for one. And the first death was, of course, Matu. But now the chase with Faith Beyond popping that ult of his. Puppy just getting decimated by this Sunray. And with this, I believe PSG LGD will back away. Really Wolf clutch. versus Dragon. Really, really clutch face shift dodge on the RP, but still can't get out, and they get on top of him with the Dragon Knight and get the kill. And the curse next to the Lycan summons. This is something you need to keep in mind all game as Faith Beyond is a lot of the time on Lycan, you can try to play around the curse so you don't get your hero stuck to your own creeps, but you also need to play them around your teammates. And in, in like these clutch positions on the map on high grounds, it can be difficult to find an attack angle without exposing someone. And Yaps are very quick to identify that. All right, there's going to be an illusory orb coming out of this phase shift. I'm going to just curse him next to the wolves, and he's going to die. So very, very nice. And so the Roche right Pit secret goes now. Nisha, of course, does not have his ultimate to work with. Zai, no RP. But they know a lot of ults are down for PSG LGD as well. The coil is online. But it's or Roche is already at half HP. Looks like this is just going to be given up. I'm not even sure if they're aware this is happening. I think they have a pretty good idea and are opting not yep. to go. They're just too They're far the away. And they get the deny on Roche. That would be pretty epic. No. Matu gets the Aegis secret, gets Roche. Oh. Well, against some of the teams in the tournament, they would have been able to deny the Aegis there with the Wolf Radiant because nobody would have picked it up. That's true. Secret have watched the replays and have identified that Aegis of the Immortal <laughs> does give you an advantage and is worth taking on a hero. Yes. So they will grab it there onto Matu. Very happy that he did his research there. Um, very new element to the game, Aegis of the Immortal. I mean, it's one of those things where the pressure is so high, you can't emulate this, you know? And sometimes you're just thinking about other stuff, Cinder, and you, you know this all the time, Cassie. You literally I literally don't listen anything. to anything. Well, you don't listen to anything either. That's so. true. I don't know. I don't know how you get by in life, to be perfectly honest. Ame has the Shadow Blade with the Echo Saber in tow, going for the Blink Dagger next and then into the Silver Edge. So, pretty standard build for the Tiny here. And how close are we to. I mean, Helm of the Overlord was finished now for Faith Beyond, and Ags will be next. So, we're seeing the basic of the same build Quelling Blade, no boots. Now, what creep do you Overlord. want? On the, uh, on the Helm of the Overlord. Do you want Radiant the Dragon or do you want the Golem? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, even the Thunderhide is super good for Tiny with that attack speed. Yeah. Right? Uh, so he's going to get a Golem this time around. Of course, he doesn't get to choose. He gets whatever spawns here. Uh, the max health is nice, but at the same time, Wyvern well, does a decent the Golem job. Golem synergizes really nicely with Tiny. So maybe they'll confuse that for the oh, real hero. Yes. See? Anything's possible with TI. The pressure really gets to you. Sometimes you see things. Basically an even game, though, in terms of net worth right now. Still three minutes to go with the Aegis for Matsu. Let's see what Secret can do to try to take advantage of this second life. And it is worth keeping in mind, this is a 17 and a half minute game that has nine kills, and Ame has been in zero. He's zero, zero, zero. He's playing the Merlina Medusa of old, <laughs> uh, literally just farming side lanes, hoping his team wins the game until it's over. Uh, <laughs> It's a very memorable game for me. It's all the way back from Dota 1, but when Merlino, I believe he was playing for King KS Int at the time, he had a game, he ended 0 0 0 and 1 as Medusa. Man, what a Hate boss. Creeps all game. What a boss. And then they won. <laughs> uh, but Ami is going to get involved now, has Dagger and Shadow Blade, so now the farm is going to, the net worth is going to be put to use, so to speak. Right. As they are making an invasive play here into the enemy triangle. Going to be farming it up. One of the nice things about Helm of the Overlord, it can just farm ancient camps very easily. So as long as uh, a secret aren't willing to take the risk of going there, there's some extra income for Faith Beyond. Mm -hmm. Naturally, oh, they might find Matumba again. Mato has a good idea that yeah. they're here, though, based on how he's playing. Keep in mind, by the way, the Radiant's two carries, top Tiny top level top 15, top. Weaver level 12. That's Weaver true. won his lane. Like, this is just... Yeah, it's just get Tiny on Faith Beyond using his ult. Mostly for defensive purposes here, but Ami's in the vicinity, gets the avalanche toss, and down goes the Aegis. Oh, Zai almost died. Yeah, Zai gets cold embraced in the meantime, still has his RP to work with, but it's the Golem that's beating the crap out of him. We'll have to back away, and now Nisha, in his dragon form, still has his BKB available to go, but here comes Puck, he has to force out the BKB. Nothing to say, he's gonna get stunned, but gets the coil off, it's only onto one from the backside. You see the Mortimer Kiss is coming as well from so far away, but the cancel from Ame blows up Puppy. Mid Mortimer's Kisses. Still has his buyback though. Matu, time lapse is <laughs> okay. Playing it close there. Absolutely. That's one of those high risk, low reward plays where you could get one attack in on the Ogre, not even close to killing him. It but looked awesome. It did. <laughs> Flashy Matu. I love it. As Ame 
Yeah, he is. <laughs> this Giro is so insane right now. It's so hard to... I mean, late game, it feels like, oh, we've seen so many games where it's like a 1v4. And like, okay, surely they'll kill Tiny and just beats the crap out of everybody. They're just to run away. Yeah, so we're going to see immediate burst here. Look at how much collateral damage he did to Zai there with just the combo and yeah. the, the, tree th the tree throw. But good cold embrace does keep him alive against the ancient granite golem who... You know, you shouldn't underestimate this. When we talk about Helm of the Overlord, a lot of the time we focus on, okay, is it the dragon can split push waves? Is it the golem that gives AoE health to the team? But it hits for 250. Yeah, they like, all do. They're it's all like very a hero. Strong. It is actually an extra hero that you get as Lycan. I think Faith Beyond didn't even attack anything with his hero that fight. It's literally just the golem and the, the wolves doing mm -hmm. the work. As we're going to see, an orchid pickup by Yapsor. So going for somewhat some late by his here. standards, minute 20 here. Uh, is very good against Puck for a while, uh, but ultimately it will fall off as Puck starts getting a good defensive counter item such as Yules, Lincoln's, Disc. Um, currently, looks like he will s go straight for the Disc, has the recipe and the yeah. Arcane Boots, so nothing to say. Wants that solution to Dragon Tail Orchid immediately. And if you want to be clutch as, as secret against that, you kind of need to... You need to force out the disc reset and then make another go. It's hard to imagine a play where they can one-shot combo him. Because if you force out the disc, what's your follow-up? Like, all of the status resist is just going to make it too difficult to take him down before he gets his spells off and resets. Seeker have smoked up now. I mean, this is such so exciting. Every team at this stage of the tournament now, very close in skill. Most people give LGD the advantage, but I don't know if it's that much. It's, there's the initiation onto Jin Q. Orchid going to prevent any cut type of getaway here. Nisha gets credit for that kill. Yeah, nice pick. It is unfortunate for Secret only onto position four, but it could start the makings of a push on the bottom tier one tower. At least looks like Nisha is planning on getting something done here. But at the same time, Matu is showing in mid. So LGD are offered two choices here, basically. They could try to go and defend their bottom tower, knowing there's no Weaver, or making the map read that, okay, they're only showing Dragonite and Snap here. They could try to invade and kill the Weaver in the triangle. Um, presented with those two choices, they are going to defend bottom tower with, with Amis Tiny. And he is now going to Shadow Blade up. Can he actually one-shot combo the Magnus with 2k health? I'll just say yes. Armor. I'll just say yes. Okay, well, he can one-shot the Creep Wave. That's confirmed. Wow, that's shocking at this stage yeah, of the game. Can't believe it. I mean, I, I don't want to underestimate Tiny. He's holding a Christmas tree, for God's sake. Only yeah. a complete sadist would beat the crap out of people with something like that. If you, is... if you did have to choose a tree as a weapon, I think it's not the worst choice, but I do think there would be better better types of trees wow. as well. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of tweets about what would be the best tree for destroying somebody on the enemy team. Mm. I mean, it does have a pointy, pointy end, so... Yeah. And the ornaments can really hurt. A lot I mean, of needles. Plastic, That's true. plastic is terrible for Dep the environment. It's probably terrible for these heroes, Depending too. Depending on what the ornaments are made out of. That's true. Uh, they have the same color as the an ancient granite golem's eyes. So maybe oh. previous victims of Tiny uh, engraved into that tree. That would be a great Arcana addition. <laughs> Sounds like an episode of, of Slax's lore show. Yeah, sure, we're not, we're not going to say the name of the show because, you know, we don't want to plug anything. Yeah, we don't do that. 2K net worth lead here for PSG Minions LGD. Minions Nothing to say. Minions like you said, the Endus is ready to be assembled, basically. Just waiting for the right time here. Yeah. As Zai. Haven't really seen, like, a true initiation with the RP. We've seen, like, the single RP that basically at the beginning when he got his uh, Blink Dagger initially, but not much since then. Mark There's toss. the Horn Toss. Skewer back. Looking for a quick kill on Y, and they'll get it. Seeing the power of this horn toss, Cinder, and this this shard is S tier right now, yep. no doubt about it. Basically has around the same AoE, I believe a little bit more than Axe Call. In okay. not around your entire hero, but in the frontal cone, it's bigger than Call and obviously pulls enemies back so you can skewer. So oh. very strong. All right, Faith Beyond, Aghanim Scepter online. So yep. he Secret can bite haven't Tiny. Really managed to put the amount of pressure that I think they would have liked yeah. before this could now comes out. Because Ame, okay, let's let's summarize what Ame has buffing him up right now. He has 4k health, by the way. So he has Ancient Granite Golem for the health. He has Bloodlust. He has Wolf Bite. He now has a Christmas tree as a wolf. This is a new tradition that PSG LG is trying to get the Avalanche Toss Matu oh. <laughs> gets blown up. Even pops the BKB, but cannot live through that. Merry Christmas, Puppy. Secret. Early Merry Christmas for them. Puppy does survive the onslaught, though. <laughs> it's a disco wolf. 
I can't take this game seriously. <laughs> the There's the RP from Zion, but it's more of a defensive maneuver. Too dead for secret. And no buybacks to work with. The egg is popped. All right, Nisha is able to get that at the very least, but his BKB won't be around for that much longer, and so will his life. Kindren. Three dead and only one kill for secret here. PSG LGD really taking advantage of these timings. I remember when Dragon Knight was the tanky hero, Shannon. Those were the days. But then, then the Dire invented the Christmas tree. <laughs> and that just pierces through all armor you could possibly imagine. <laughs> That's right. Obviously, the Silver Edge factor should be considered against the DK as well. I don't even think that was part of that kill right there. I uh, had been using it previously for that Weaver burst, but... Yikes. Yeah, that was unfortunate. And obviously, there's no way to know this, but the Avalanche thought he... Matu actually survived through that. Top BKB then died. If he had time lapse, he would have lived almost certainly. I don't certainly. know if he could have got the animation off. I think he BKB then right. instantly it, spammed time lapse. Yeah, it, it, it might have been a too long of a cast animation. Yeah, that's I think true. so. I mean, either way, that's not a decision that you can really fault him for regardless. But 5k net worth lead now for PSG LGD and Tiny Ame is uh, looking quite scary. He has 350 CS minute 25. Yeah. That this is, is what uh, Santa Claus looks like in hell. How many CS is that per minute, Sun Sven? You I, have a very I wasn't good listening to a word. How that you many just CS does he have per minute? 350 in 26 minutes. Do the uh, math quickly. 8 million. That is very close to the truth. Good guess. Good guess. It is more along the lines of I would guess about 13 or 14. Okay. Uh, but 8 million is not a bad, not a bad guess for a first try. Appreciate that, Sandra. Yeah, very good. American education at its best again. So. What can Secret do to get back into this game? They have a lot of initiation. Again, we talked about Zai. They haven't been the ones to really start the fights in a lot of these cases. The PSG LGD smokes have really set the tempo of this game, especially after the uh, online activation of the Aghanim Scepter for Faith Beyond. As we uh -oh. see Tiny in wolf form again. Christmas come early. Yeah. Here he comes. I don't see He's the Christmas tree anymore. I think he doesn't he, find anyone. He just has ornaments on his body. There's no... <laughs> My God. That's terrifying. It's a wolf <laughs> that's glowing with lights everywhere. It just throws a tree out of its mouth. Yeah, it's uh, it's th a thing of nightmares for sure. Oh, my goodness. Obviously, has his shard, as you can see. So don't unless he throws the Christmas tree, he'll have it up, despite what it looks like oh, right wait, now. Oh, wait. When he throws the tree out of his mouth, he loses all of his glimmer, because that's from carrying the tree. Right. So what have we all right. one of the best cosmetics in the game, no doubt. That's the one I equip as well. Matu. Roche is up again. Has his BKB, obviously, but hasn't really found much farm after the fact. Cinderin has the Chrysalis right now. And they need a lot more damage from him. But the, really, yeah. the problem is he can't survive a lot of this damage I, as well. I think, honestly, that's the key word right now for Secret. Where's the damage? I think that's the biggest problem. How do you kill Tiny with 4k health and 20 armor with these heroes? Weaver doesn't have a Daedalus yet. Your Magnus has gone full utility build. Your Dragon Knight doesn't have AC. Wyvern does good damage. Uh, honestly, I think Yapsor needs to play the key role in killing the Tiny. He needs to somehow get the Cursed Orchid and a lot of damage from uh, from Arctic Burn, or they're just not taking him out. I well, think. the problem is now, even if you use Orchid on Tiny... He has Satanic. He has Satanic oh, to dispel it. Goodness. So he is looking pretty. Going for a Moon Shard next. All and right. he has spider legs as well. So now he can cross terrain as a dog. So he's going to be a wolf, uh, rock, spider hybrid. The quick fox. With a Christmas tree. Don't forget that. Very important aspect. There's the Avatars. And the break onto Nisha. He's going to get saved by the cookie. Here comes the RP. Onto two. You can see the Sunray doing a ton of damage. Trying to heal up Ave. And that Satanic is doing a really good job of that. He's going to be able to find at least one kill here. The coil was on a couple of heroes. His Yapser's going to take a tumble, but a bunch of buyback from Team Secret. They want to try to win this fight. But PSG LGD, they're only going to cost them one buyback. And now the pressure is on to Matu on this Weaver, getting extremely low. But it's able to sliver away just fine, Cinder. And PSG LGD only lose one. Yep. It's basically three buybacks for one. I wonder if there was a play there for Yapsor where he could have got a curse, but I don't know if there's enough in the tank, right? Like, what's going to kill the Tiny in the curse? It's a couple of Lycan summons and probably still gets the Satanic off in the end and finds the kill, so... Honestly, Secret did a lot of things right there in order to kill the Tiny, but the numbers just aren't favoring them anymore. Um, you imagine a type of fight of that kind 10 minutes ago and Secret probably kill him there, mm -hmm. but obviously LGD never presented them with the opportunity until now that they feel strong enough that they will come out ahead. Now, 8k gold lead for them. 
in yeah, a very even, good position. Even with a nice RP on Ame, obviously with the 20 talent giving you extra status resist, it's it's going to be hard. I mean, even with all the lockdown in the world, they just don't have the damage still. It's yeah. just the main issue. And but. you see you see the confidence from Ami. He's actually confident enough that he doesn't need armor, that he's just going to go for mm -hmm. the Moon Shard. The armor will coming from Lycan getting the AC. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times you will see the tiny... Oh, actually, they swapped it around. He, he wasn't confident after all. So they're going to get the Shard on Lycan for the split pushing wolves. And then Tiny himself will be carrying the AC. I, gu I guess the communication was something along the lines of... Probably Faith Beyond's like, I'm getting AC next. And Ami's like, eh, I kind of need the armor. So yeah. I want to get it. That extra 10 is very important for him to stay ahead, basically. Because you you did see a glimmer of hope there for Secret that, you know, a little bit more damage on their cores and maybe there's a kill there. So Ami wants to stay ahead of the curve with... with well, we have an initiation now. from Nisha, but the Sunray from afar, nothing to say is super fine. Even the Orchid being used and the curse on top. But there's the Avatos in wolf form. Down goes Yapsor to start this fight. 70 seconds, no buyback. Kind of reminding me a little bit of a Little Red Riding Hood here, just that um, Jesus. Wyvern is... Yes? Wyvern doesn't really fit into that story so well. Yeah, the, I, the I, was, very... I was wondering where you would, where were we going to go with that, but I don't know oh what children's God, stories they I say. I where Rush was going to go, and it Goodbye. was down. Five-second kill. Yeah, Age is down. And, and they, they get the shard, the shard to... Faith Beyond. For now, he might pass it on. He was right. planning on buying it anyway. I think, okay, they have it on oh, Phoenix oh, already. Who could they even give it to at this point? Ogre? Oh, Nisha, all right. Secret, do find a kill. All right, gave the shard to Puck. Okay, so Waning Rift, uh, yeah, a little bit of knockback, which yeah, synergizes with the ult, and it gives you a little bit of vision uh, to be able to D ward and whatnot. Yep. That's solid. Some nice fairy dust. It fits the lore, I think. Yeah. I think that's fine. It does. Uh, fun fact about Puck, inspired by uh, which play was it again by Shakespeare? A Midsummer Night's Dream, I think. Sure, I definitely, I definitely read that one in school. Yeah, you don't know books, you only know movies. I, mean, I don't know either, <laughs> but I can pretend. Yeah, I like how you bring up something you have no knowledge of and then <laughs> rely on me who also has no knowledge of oh, it. Oh, my entire life is built around pretending. That's you true. Have no idea. Fake it till you make it. Yep. That is the best advice you can give anybody. And then you keep faking after you've yes, made it. Yes, you still. keep it. <laughs> uh, 6K net worth lead just from Ame and... Uh, and Matu, just the discrepancy there. That is pretty just gigantic. But if they can find a way, I mean, obviously with the Aegis, it's going to be difficult. But if they can find a way to kill Tiny, then yep. it's a little bit more man <laughs> a little bit. It's way more manageable for uh, for Secret to How actually win a fight here. Okay, how do they kill him twice? Let's theory craft a little bit here. You're, you're probably looking at a Horn Tusk Skewer into Fountain. Yeah. And then you need Cookie or Dragon Tail for the first life. Okay. And but the well, you need level twenty on Zai to yes, get that skewer talent. Yes, exactly. Zai isn't twenty, so I, I don't know. I think you also need Aghanim Scepter on Yapsor to get the constant burn percentage-based damage. Yeah, could help. Uh, okay, Ami is gonna go ahead and five shot this top tower. Okay. Fair enough. He's looking uh, very nice. He's twenty-five now, so ends up taking the two toss charges. And mid tower, one, two, three, four, and, oh, five. Oh, okay. L lacking a little bit on damage there, Ami. Let's be real. Yeah. Okay. That's wasn't as impressive as, as we've seen so far this game. Got to step it up. All right. Maybe if he was a wolf, he could have killed it. 500 CS minute 33 for Ami. Okay. For comparison, Matsu, Matsu with very good farm has 360 on Weaver. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see the break onto Nisha. Able to disrupt the Avatos combo, though, from Ame. Yeah. Ame has that extra toss charge, so with that level 25, might be able to solo the Dragon Knight, even if he gets the full-on combo with Avatos into the secondary toss before Dragon Tail comes out. Mm -hmm. He's going to get bit, though, uh, and go on the hunt for Matu, who he's expecting might try to poke the, either the bottom tier 2 tower or farm this this area down here that is being scouted by a wolf. But very wisely, Matu just hiding off in the side. Now it's going to show with the bugs. And hide again. There's no detection, I believe, on Ame, so can't yeah. kill him off, and he's going to TP out. Good read from the Tumba Men there. You just need to do that a million times more. I mean, that does waste a lot of time for Ame, obviously, uh, but they're still sporting a double-digit net worth lead right now. Uh, and there's a double damage rune bottom. It's going to uh, be taken by Puck. Okay. That's a little bit surprising, I won't yeah. lie. It's pretty good on Tiny, I've heard. Yeah, I um, Maybe he can start so. three shutting towers then. But nothing to say is like, you know what? I had a rough start to this game. I only have one kill right now. 
Tiny's getting all the credit. Time for me to show up here. Has the Octarine Core, Boots of Travel, Eon Disc, Blink, and Veil. He has... <laughs> you wouldn't think he got stomped in lane, would you? I know. He's bounced back pretty <laughs> admirably, I have to say. Ooh, he might see Matsu here. He could coil. He uh -huh. gem. Yeah. Very so close Already expanding to the Arctic there. Burn here. So only a minute left on this Aegis. And, I mean, oh, okay, we have the Skewer back. This is on to Y again, so it's going to be a freebie. He seems to be the only one that Secret can kill pretty reliably without uh, getting Beatty into a pretty big team fight. Dragons, uh, the Elder Dragon form is expended for this from Nisha. So True. once Ogre respawns, they are down that key spell. Uh, but the, the good news for Secret is they're effectively denying the Aegis value, right? There's 40 seconds left on Ami. He has not hit a base tower yet. So good job from them not getting caught out. I think what LGD really wants in this game, their play call, is we want to find any core and then force the buyback with a high ground push. But without finding that core, they just haven't felt confident to just press the issue. Mm -hmm. And it's understandable. You're against Wyvern, you're against Magnus. It can get dicey in the enemy base always. You get skewered into towers, and then if the enemy team tries to help, there's that curse. And LGD are probably confident as well that, well, guess what? If we're just farming, we're still, we still have plenty of room to grow. Tiny will be getting a swift blink sometime soon. And wonder what he's going to get last, actually, here for Ami. He's going to swap in the treads now. Of course, I would think Daedalus. Yeah, probably. I mean, Daedalus plus Silver Edge, I think that's fine still, right? Double crit, but uh, yeah. I mean, you could eventually, if you kill Roche again, get the Ags, which... It, I don't know, Ags is interesting on Tiny because it's from a distance, right? It's not exactly how he's playing right now. It's Nisha. Yeah. He's going to get the Arcane Rune successfully here. Oh yeah, still room to grow. I mean, we've seen Butterfly, obviously, in the past. I wonder if there's any point he wants BKB as well. That's true. You could be it's that guy and buy BKB. Then you're only playing into Curse and RP, and you know you're not dying in either of them. And while right. you're BKB, you're forcing them to use those spells, or their heroes are just going to disappear. So Matu did get his shard. So this is going to allow the Swarm to reveal invis units, which would be pretty helpful against these Shadow Blades. Yep. It gives him a bit more spread damage with the... Geminate attack. Pretty common pickup for Weaver. It uh, increases your effective damage output in teamfights by quite a lot if you get the right position. Yep, and I mean, at 25, do you... I'm guessing you can take the Geminate attack talent as well, right? Because that just synergizes yeah, even more with the shard. Probably, yeah. I, I think you're doing this game, at least. You're, you're still starved for damage, right? Like you've pointed out a couple of times, they're killing the ogre, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, Secret, despite kind of being stuck in their base, the lead for PSG LGD hasn't really grown by much in the last few minutes. It feels kind of like it's tapered off a bit. And yep. just kind of at a standstill to some degree. You know, take control of their outpost again and their jungle as a whole. As PSG LGD almost certainly just waiting for the next Roche, which will be Roche number three. They're, they're still, they're really banking on at some point Secret are going to slip up and get caught, but they haven't for the last five minutes. They haven't been able to find a single core kill. They keep using this wolf bite onto Ame and letting him chase, but there's just nothing to be found. Secret are always in the right position, but... Oh, that's an easy kill on that. And the Overlord Secret will finally make their way into their own triangle to try to reclaim some ground. And I would imagine PSGLGD oh, will just have like an over. I don't know if he keeps that, but level her on Tiny. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Well, that he's going to hold on to the Ascetic's cap for now. Yeah, you could just wait for the building hitting, I guess. Uh, just for the extra siege damage, but... <laughs> yeah, you can't get much better item than that from the jungle for pushing Even the tower. the leveler's too. base stats are kind of nice, right? The 50 attack speed and 5 armor. Uh, wait, it gets 5 armor? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Uh, it That's got so changed, random. It got changed a while back. I okay. think it used to be 60 attack speed and How could a more. weapon give you armor? Good offense is a good defense? Is that, I guess so, yeah. Is that the saying? Or the best offense is a good... You're supposed to correct me when I'm wrong. Yeah, it's a, it's a play by Shakespeare. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, he was really into basketball back then. Mm. Pretty sure he invented it. Is, yep. uh, as we can see, the lead is... I mean, it's growing a bit, but... I mean, typically in the cases like this where they're getting starved of the map, like at this point I would expect like a 22k or more lead. For that was a focus. very specific number. Yep. Because yeah, it makes sorry. you sound smart if you get very specific. Oh, oh my god! That's like that! Two shot! Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I'm dead. I found him. Finally, <laughs> a pick dead. for. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> nice I'm dead. voice lines there. <laughs> Let's just keep layering them while uh, Yapsor is still dead. Can they just keep saying that? Then we don't need to cast. Just keep yeah. saying I'm dead until the game's over. One day it shall take our jobs, no <laughs> doubt. 
ultimately we're going to have so many voice lines that can narrate an entire game. <laughs> Oh, we got the waning red, but Matu coil. No, Kuchuing away. Yeah, Ops not taking not the bait. Interesting. I thought coiling there would feel good for nothing to say. You know, you've got Octarine core. The cooldown's pretty low, and forcing BKB charges is by no means a waste. Seeing a replay here of uh, Yapster dying in two hits. Yeah. As he is uh, actually kind of happy about that. He finds it amusing. It's like, I survived the first hit. <laughs> Did you guys see it? <laughs> I didn't get one shot. As we have a sheep stick picked up by Faith Beyond now. So he is, uh, he's really farmed himself. Yep. Interesting choice. Uh, obviously goes for something oh. different. Oh, okay. Double Tiny. damage again. Okay, I I want to see him kill Roche with this. I think he's not going to. I think he's going to kill it without it, unless Secret try and contest, but he will hit for, what is that? 905. Yeah. When he's close to everything that you, something like Pretty that. Pretty good. That's what All right, crits. we'll fight double damage. Okay. Okay, they want to go for anyone. a fight. Now he has the bloodlust applied. Ame. How many shots will it take? He finds Nisha. No, we'll back away for now. Oh, oh my god, Yaps are standing one shot this time. What the Nisha, fuck? despite having the BKB. <laughs> oh my god, Secret are crumbling because Tiny is gigantic. <laughs> Ame. Oh, what happened to Into the Roche before, baby? <laughs> Misha <laughs> already used his dragon farm, so even if he buys back... It's, <laughs> all right, Roche is dead. That has Aghanim's Scepter on it. And I believe that uh, Nothing to Say took that, if I'm not mistaken here. Yeah, and he consumes okay, it, so... When is, let me ask you a question. When is the last time you saw a hero that wasn't PA crit for over 2k without a rapier? Uh, about 30 seconds yeah, ago, Cinderin. The buildings, there we go. He's not even, applying, not even putting the leveler in his inventory. Happy with a Penta Edge Sword. There's the buyback onto Nisha. And Three, the buildings four, are five, going down quite fast. Oh, all right. Going to get the toss of the skewer back into the Geoport. We're going to have the buyback now onto Matu. Stun onto Ame. Can they kill the raid boss? Nope, he's just going to heal back to full HP again. And of course, he still has that Aegis for another four minutes. Super heads up play from nothing to say. They're getting into them on the back line. When Seeker has to get something out of this. Zai looking for an opening, but it's not going to be found. Instead, he's going to go out of his grave. Buys back into the game. Looks like Nisha. That's a dieback. 120 seconds in the grave for you. Ame triple kill. Wolf, Christmas tree, lights. Just say anything, and it makes sense at this point, Cinder, and that's two sets of racks for LGD. Broccoli. Into the top lane they go. And Matu, well, that's one shot to half HP, has to time lapse it up, already expends the BKB. They can't defend this. There's absolutely no way. 45k net worth lead out of nowhere for PSG LGD. The skewer back on the face beyond. Can they get a consolation kill of any kind? It's not looking like a recall. There goes Ave again. Whatever. Oh my god. Whatever. What an absolutely filthy performance from Ame. Oh my goodness. Gaben, Gaben help us. Tiny is on another level. I, I mean, we like talked about how Magnus was kind of the hero of the tournament, but Tiny's up there as well, Cinder. I, I feel like that, that like half, half a second or a second of puppy we just saw on camera before it cut away. It's just him like smiling, like, what can you do? Time to ban uh, Tiny, I guess. Absolutely ridiculous. And I think what's so fascinating about this game, honestly, if we were to break it down just a little bit before we throw it back to the panel is, like, this was such a stalemate for so long. Effectively, PSG LGD and Secret were kind of avoiding each other, but it favors PSG LGD's strategy overall. That it's such a great job at just buying time for Tiny, waiting. All right, we get Scepter, we get Silver Edge. Now let's go. And they're just right. running over Secret in the next two fights, control the whole map, and get the Roches. Crazy game. Yep, absolutely, Cinderin. PSG LGD take game one in very convincing fashion. Let's see what the panel has to say about the big bad wolf with that huge Christmas tree. Thank you very much, Cinder and Suns fan. Did you hear the, the crowd? LGD. LGD. That was sick. So now, we did get a chance to talk about it a little bit uh, before, but Jenkins, you were talking about the matchup between PSG LGD and Team Seeger. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, both of these teams, very creative, very uh, inventive with their drafts. LGD, they innovated this Lycan Tiny thing. It seems like they know how to deal with all of the counters. Uh, Seb was saying uh, off you know, when we were talking in the green room, that 
you know, hypothetically, they're the team that should know how to counter it better than any team. So if they're letting something through after that second ban phase, chances are it's something that they're fairly confident against. And of course, that's something that you test. You can't be absolutely certain of that. It was tested. They know how to play it. Yep. They know how to deal with the counters. I think you just get it out. Just get the tiny out. Don't risk it. <laughs> Don't risk it. That tiny was dominating the match, especially toward the end. Let's check out the stats from that last match. Oh, man, do we have some damage numbers? Oh, okay. These stats? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I feel like LGD, they kind of flowcharted Team Secret. As powerful as the tiny was, I think this was just like one chain of events that could have happened in the draft. Them opening with the tiny was more of like, okay, they're going to pick Mag. We have confidence in our tiny strategy. We'll pair it with an ogre. Second phase rolls around. They're like, okay, Lycan's still in the pool. Why not do our Lycan tiny strategy? But this is just like one of their varieties because we also mentioned earlier, Jenkins, like the Io Lycan was another pairing that they had. Puck is something that I don't think Nothing to Say has played particularly frequently, but they were like, okay, I think this is a good backup plan to help solidify our game plan. And they picked Phoenix into Snapfire. So they were like, I don't really care it's what Secret's insane. up to. Yeah, we're just going to follow our choose your own adventure draft. <laughs> I think something Aoi said on an earlier panel earlier in the week is, is that uh, LGD has such a deep hero pool on all of their roles that they can run a strategy like this where you like, okay, you have this like an offlane, right? So you're going to inherently lack disable if your offlaner doesn't have disable or at least like going into TI, like that's that's what the meta was, just stun, generic stunner offlaner. But because nothing to say can play this puck mid and do so well on it, it means that they can pick puck, who's like not exactly an exceptional hero currently, but they needed it for the draft. And it's like, it's not just nothing to say. They can do this on all of their roles where they just flex a hero. And it means that they can have these strategies that other teams can't necessarily pull out. So when we were talking about Secret earlier, you mentioned the puppy wall, and you said that PSG LGD will need to, they'll need to break through the puppy wall. And it seems yeah. like for game one, they managed to do that. What what do you think Secret can do to, to come back? I think Team Secret, I mean, Seb talked about it beautifully on the panel, and I think we saw it play out exactly like you said. Like, Secret opened up their draft with an idea in mind, where they had this, like, Mag and Wyvern, which you saw Team Spirit beat OG with, I believe, when OG played their Tiny, and... The idea of that is you have the mag skewered in the tiny and the tiny is no longer tiny. He can't go high ground, he can't hit these towers. It becomes really difficult for tiny to play his game out. But LGD just farmed up their items. They they sat back on their own side and Team Secret didn't have the course to match. They had a Weaver and they had a DK and these two heroes kind of want to play at a pace. So the support core synergy felt slightly off. And I think if Secret wants to beat LGD, they have to commit to one or the other. I think one of the Secret's biggest strengths is that they generally play pretty balanced and they play pretty balanced drafts that are well-rounded, but... LGD seems to just be putting all their eggs into one basket. And if you don't respond in a similar manner, it feels like you get outscaled or you end up in this point in the game where Tiny is two-shotting your entire draft. Yeah, speaking of that, we actually have a clip from that last match that kind of showed oh Tiny just kind of uh, bulldozing through the enemy team. I know once upon a time, one of the compendium predictions was what is, what is the biggest crit going to be of the entire tournament? I believe in this one he hits some 2k crits on the Wyvern. I mean, Wyvern's the first. Oh yep. my god! So first you see her, then you don't. That's a that's a that's DK. A that's a For Dragon god Knight sakes. with an Assault Cuirass as well. Oh my Gaben! And that was a Weaver. Was Unbelievable. Being the keyword. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think LGD just recognized their draft scales up nicer. Like it doesn't matter these two cores that Secret have. They're never gonna output damage to threaten the Tiny because if you think about it, even if you skewer back the Tiny into your base. He's just too tanky. Like, That's what? Do, who's going to be killing him? Weaver's damage is way too slow. And if Tiny gets one hit on Weaver, it's time lapse and run away. So I just feel like the core matchups and the concept that Secret went into this game with is kind of like, it hurt them. Yeah, it's that it's the well-roundedness that was almost their downfall because, right. unsurprisingly, we were all picking Seb's brain <laughs> during the match. Oh, yeah. so he, was, <laughs> he was basically uh, casting the game for right. us back then. That was great. So I won't take credit for any of this analysis, but he was saying that Secret basically strayed away from whatever a game plan against LGD would be, which is if you start out with a Mag Wyvern and you see an enemy Lycan, this Lycan is going to be useless for quite a while because even if the Lycan gets 3,000 gold, the Aghanim Scepter is not finished yet. That's 3,000 gold that's doing nothing for an offlaner right now. So if you're able to take advantage of that, take towers, make the map smaller, then all of a sudden this like and tiny combination doesn't become as terrifying when you have more map control. It's funny because Y said in an interview that basically they're really comfortable 
with just going late and they think that they make better decisions than other teams and that they'll just like pick better scaling than you. They're confident in their strategy and that there's going to be some timing that they can beat you at. And it's like, come on, come at me, like try to beat me. And they kind of did that uh, against Secret. Like Secret was, they were trying to play early. They were, tr they were trying to play to snowball the lanes, but like they just couldn't do it against LGD. And so it just makes you think like, like what you were saying, maybe what you do is you just, you pick your own, strat you you all in on one hero and see how that goes and uh, maybe you hit some timing that you can actually beat lgd at well team secret has they're down one game but they're not out yet let's take a quick look at a behind the scenes with a secret rapid fire <laughs> Back with more rapid fire questions. I'm stepping in for Casey. I'm here with Nisha. I'm here with the Yapsor, Matu from Team Secret. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Who played in the very first TI Grand Finals? Navi versus. Navi versus. Uh... I don't know. What? <laughs> first TI? You were there. I think it was a Chinese team. Yes. But I'm thinking Ihom. That's right. That's right? Very good. Can you name all the teams who won TI? <laughs> That's a hard one. Navi, IG, Alliance, Newbie, EG, Wings, Liquid, OG, Twice. All right, I guess it's not so hard. You nailed it in, in order and everything. Who is the last pro Dota player you talked to that is not on Team Secret? Artur. Artur, I guess. Boba. I can't say I remember. Who cares about them? Who cares? <laughs> we don't who need cares? to talk about any of them. What was the last movie you watched? Th these questions are something. <laughs> the last movie. <laughs> the Hunt. The Hunt? Yeah. I don't watch many movies. I binge watched the entire Ozark, The Death of Stalin. Death of Stalin? Mm -hmm. Do you like violence? Yeah. Okay. Who would you say is the worst teammate in interviews? I have no idea, unfortunately. If you don't know, then. But like, <laughs> I guess me. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it. Who is the worst teammate in interviews? I would say Nisha. 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 Poor guy got put on blast by your whole team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so good. Not only, not only are they great in the game, but they have like the big Dota encyclopedia memory where they can name the winners of TI for all of them in order. That's because they're looking to name, <laughs> put their name at the very end of that list. Mati was this close to saying secret. <laughs> I, I love that they all struggle. Like, what was the last movie you watched? Too, it's like I don't know. I just play Dota. Like that's all I do. They don't. There's no room in those brains for anything other than Dota. Do you have the same experience, Insania? Do you have you watched a movie lately? I can genuinely say I don't remember the last oh movie I watched. Oh my god. All right. Well, that's across all Dota professional gamers, I suppose. They can't they don't watch movies because they play a lot of Dota. Now, let's bring the teams out for the next game. All right, so now LGD is taking the stage. They are one game up, and Team Secret is one game down. And neither of these teams have been in the lower bracket at all. Like, they made it out in the upper, in the upper bracket in group stage, and they've made it all the way out here. So what is the mindset for these teams coming in? What is the mindset for Team Secret, knowing that they're one game down? I think Secret has to be thinking about the tiny right. They had a planned answer for it, and it didn't quite work out the way they expected it to. So the question here is, do you ban out the tiny, or do you leave it and try to beat it again? I think Puppy sometimes can be a little bit stubborn when it comes to these things. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had, like, we're going to try it again. We just messed something up either in the draft or in the game, and then they leave the tiny and try to beat it. But based on what I saw, I think you probably want to ban the tiny out. LGD seem way too strong and too comfortable playing around it, and maybe try to give them some other draft where you feel like you can outscale the LGD timing, because I think that's really the key thing for Secret. If Secret are allowed to sit back and LGD has to come to them, I think they're very happy playing the game. I was overhearing Seb, our special like, draft panelist, talking with Tsunami. Tsunami, tell me a little bit about what Seb said about what he would do if he were in their place. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I can do this verbatim. I also definitely can't do a French accent. Do it with the French accent. No, I can't do the French accent. No, let's leave out the French accent. <laughs> I, let's just I, do it in Tsunami So accent. I specifically asked if you could erase all the bands from your mind. He, he wasn't a big fan of the Weaver. And so I was like, okay, you get rid of the Weaver. Say that that's why Secret are not sticking to their game plan is because Weaver can't f follow up with the timings that the Mag Wyvern was going for. Mm -hmm. Then what is the concept? And ultimately it was what I had said earlier that you have to commit to an earlier idea 
if you were going against a tiny lichen. Halfway through your draft, you can't be like, uh, well, actually, maybe uh, maybe we can outscale the lichen, actually. Maybe we can outscale the, the tiny. So I want Secret to fully commit to an early idea. I don't mm -hmm. think that they should take go late to late against LGD because I think LGD will always win late game. And I do think that maybe let the Magnus go through, even though it's been the hero of yesterday and day before yesterday. I think that Secret have enough of their own independent strategies that they don't need to rely on a tournament meta. They have enough strong heroes of their own. Like, Yapsor Rubik was quite popular in their group stage match, and it was a 1-1 split, but I think heroes like that, that are a little bit more unpredictable, would be more successful against a team like LGD. Jenkins, you were mentioning earlier that the, you were interested in the picks and the counter picks on the side of Team Secret that didn't really work out that well. Yeah, so so LGD does this really interesting thing where in a vacuum, they're picking heroes that are quite bad. Uh, so for example, like the Phoenix versus the Snapfire, you have this counter of inst instantly killing the egg right. with the, uh, what, what the hell is that about? I don't play that. I have like three little games. Shredder. Little Shredder. Little Shredder. <laughs> you, you little Shredder, you insta-kill the egg, right? So picking Phoenix into Snapfire is like kind of crazy. And then Lycan as well, traditionally Lycan is considered to be countered by Winter Wyvern, but it's not really the case anymore. Yeah. It's like in practice, that doesn't necessarily happen because of how you want to play the game. This is like an offlane. You're wolf biting somebody. You're, you know, you've got the Necro book. Like it doesn't matter. All right. Well, let's see how this goes in game two of LGD and Secret.